We're going to move into a time of baptisms uh, here at the vineyard. Uh, when someone wants to get baptized, uh, we invite them to share what we term around here is a God story or their testimony, what their life may have been like before Jesus and what it looks like now. And so tonight we have two people getting baptized. I'm going to invite them up, Rob and Nikki. Come on up, Rob. Everybody say, hi, hey, Rob. That was terrible. Can we do that again? Everybody say, hey, Rob. There we go. Hello. My name is Rob, and this is my personal testimony. Before I accepted Jesus as my Savior, my life was full of deceit, jealousy, emptiness, and depression. I lived my life from one foxhole prayer to the next. I struggled to overcome my battles with addiction for over a decade. There were many times that I could have been killed, whether it be from a car accident, an overdose, or being in neighborhoods that I just simply had no business being in. But God had other plans for me. For it was at my lowest point, broken, beaten, and defeated, where his love and light was able to finally reach me. Today I am a man of God. Amen. And for the last three years that I've been on this journey, I've recited this prayer daily, and I want to uh, pray it with you guys today. God, I offer myself to thee, to build with me and to do with me as you will. Relieve me of the bondage of self so I can better do your will. Take away my difficulties so victory over them may bear witness to those I may help of your love, your power, and your way of life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, Nikki, come on over. Everybody say hi, Nikki. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Nicole, and this is my testimony. I had a very hard life growing up. I had lived a life of pain. Following that was anger, resentment, trauma, and constant fighting and abuse. I was constant fighting and abuse when I was growing up. I was told that I was worthless among many normal or horrible degrading names. Because of this, I was stuck in pain throughout my childhood and adulthood. I wanted to die many a times. I wanted to kill myself. One day, I ran into a woman who said she was an evangelist, and she had told me many things that I felt and went through, and none of this that she would have never known, she said, that God told her. She invited me, she invited me to her church, and when I went home, I not only had something standing at the end of my bed, but all the furniture was moved away from the walls. I called the evangelist and the pastor and his wife, and they came to my home, and they asked me if I wanted to give my life to Jesus. In my heart, I wanted to say yes, but my mouth said no. I didn't think that my life was good enough to go to the Lord. That day, Jesus saved me anyways, and the pain was gone. I no longer felt sad or sorrow or fear from my past. My mind had been renewed, and I had a real experience with our God. Ten years have gone by, and I strayed from his path. After being in bad relationships and it leaving me broken once again, I, had, I can say that I've gone back to the Lord since then, and we've made a covenant with each other. He's allowed me to see how much bad and crookedness was inside of me. I felt him challenging me to see that and to change. In Matthew 14, 29, in the middle of strong winds and waves, Peter trusts Jesus and he steps out of the boat. It's an incredible display of faith in Jesus. And none of the disciples dared to step out of the boat. So today, I, Nicole Adams, am, giving, or am getting baptized again as a sign and display of my trust and that I put my life in God's hand once again and to put all of my trust and all of my love in the one and only true God.
Isn't God great? Here's what we're going to do. Uh, those two are going to come over and get ready to get into the baptismal. Uh, we're going to have a pastor, as another staff member in there, and we're going to ask them uh, three questions. We've asked them these three questions before, but the questions are, uh, do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? And uh, they'll answer yes. Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? Here at the Vineyard, we, we take it very seriously that uh, Jesus is a, a personal relationship and that he is Lord. And so we ask them that question, they'll say yes. And then we ask them, which is a, a phenomenal question for all of us to consider, for the rest of your life, to the best of your ability, will you continue to follow Jesus? And they'll answer yes. And we'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You all get to watch, participate. Worship will be going on uh, in the background. You can continue to sit. At some time, we'll invite you to stand, but that's the plan uh, that we'll move into. So let's pray as we prepare for baptisms. So God, we thank you that um, even though the world might not see our value, you see our value and you call us into relationship. And so we pray for these two, for Rob and Nikki as they are baptized, God, that you would meet them in a special way. And we celebrate tonight with heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. See, on the hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done. Sing for the freedom he has won. Even death is dead and done. His life has overcome. Speak, say the name Stand. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to invite uh, Rob and Nikki and all that. I know that you're like super wet and that's okay. Uh, we would love to pray for you just as a church family. And so I'm going to invite um, Rob. Can you go on this side down, like halfway down uh, an aisle? Nikki, this one right here. You, you can go down this aisle halfway down. And here's what we're going to do as a church. Uh, if you felt like, as the testimonies were shared, like you wanted to lay a hand or get close and pray for one of them, I'm going to invite you just to move, and we're going to pray as a church. We're sort of going to do a huddle. You don't have to move, but if you want to move, you can huddle around, lay a hand on these folks who took a pretty giant leap 
to stand before a group of us to say Jesus is amazing. So we're going to pray. I'm going to let you move. There's a couple of people moving. I don't want to rush it. So as I came up on the platform, uh, I just heard, to the best of my ability to hear the Lord, just him say, hey, nice job. Welcome to a family. So God, we thank you that you are a God who calls us. And you have called Rob and you have called Nikki out of circumstances that may have been confusing, that may have been challenging, but God, you are a God who rescues. And so I pray right now that you would protect them, that you would protect their minds, their thoughts. I bind the enemy from trying to disrupt their direction and their pace towards you, God. I I pray that as they connect to various things throughout the church, that you would continue to call them, God, that you would highlight a great path for them that when they read scripture, they would be able to digest the word of God in a new way and it would sink from their head to their heart and it would become a guide for their life. I pray that uh, they would find people that would speak life into them. Christian friends speaking life. And so God, uplift them, guide them, protect them. And we know God that you love them. And so as a church, we all say, amen, amen. So I'm going to invite you to have a seat. We're going to move into a time of uh, baptisms. Here at the church, I'm going to invite the four folks that are getting baptized. You can head up uh, here at the church. When somebody's getting baptized, we invite them to share their testimony or their God story, sort of what their life was like before Jesus and what it looks like now. And so uh, here are some testimonies. Nate, I'm going to invite you to come over. Everybody say hi, Nate. Hi, Nate. Hi. Hi, my name's Nate. A uh, small part of my life before I met Jesus included excessive drinking, selfishness, bad choices, and a lack of appropriate time with my family. I uh, spent a lot of time working, and even after work, I'd spend hours working on other jobs. Um, instead of doing things that needed to be done, I spent a lot of time sitting at a bar. Many times my family would be worrying about me. Probably about a year ago, I decided something was missing in my life. And I asked my youngest son on Sunday morning if he wanted to go to church, which he said yes. Since that day, we've missed very few Sundays. After deciding to spend my life chasing Jesus, I have noticed that I'm more relaxed. Things just kind of have a way of working themselves out. I just don't stress about as much. My family doesn't worry about me as much, and we all have a much better relationship. Praise God. Elise, come on over. Everybody say hi, Elise. Hi, Elise. Hello. I was born and raised in a Lutheran household, and I was born and raised in a Lutheran household and was baptized when I was just two weeks old. I went to church, I went to Sunday school and church every Sunday with my family and eventually attended a Lutheran grade school as well. This continued until my sophomore year of high school. Then a series of events occurred that led to me no longer attending church every Sunday, and I also transferred to a public school. When this happened, at first I was sad and slowly could feel my faith weaken. Throughout the remainder of my high school and college years, I no longer had a personal relationship with Jesus. I've always known about him and that he is my savior, but I was no longer living my life for him. Several years after college, when I met my husband, we decided we wanted to find a church, and this is when I started to read my Bible and have a more consistent prayer life. Today, I want to be baptized to recommit my life to Jesus. I want to be obedient to him and be a light to others. That's great. Tony, come on over. Was that your wife? wife. Yeah. They're married. Everybody say hi, Tony. Hey, good morning. My name's Tony. I've always believed in God, and there never really wasn't a time that I didn't. However, my relationship with Jesus really started in my early 20s. I spent my younger years exploring different religions and trying to understand how they related to my understanding of God. 
It wasn't until a very low point in my life when I was younger that I had fallen to the ground face first and simply gave thanks to God. I am still stubborn, sinful, and often too quick to judge even now. I accept that I am not righteous on my own, but only through the will and grace of Jesus can I be forgiven. Although I was baptized as a child, I did not believe it had any meaning. Even up until this very moment, I had doubted the importance of baptism for a healthy relationship with God. Frankly, it wasn't until my wife decided she needed to be baptized as an adult that I realized how stubborn I had become in my views. The baptism isn't about improving my relationship with God through symbol symbology. It's about improving my relationship with God by being an example of his will. In order to walk more in line with Jesus today, I know that I need to be baptized. In order to grow with God's church, I must be willing to be a part of God's church. I pray now only that the Lord guide me in humility, courage, and in my next steps. I love and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and today I'm wanting to profess it proudly. One more. Kara, come on over. Everybody say hi, Kara. Hi, everyone. Before I started living my life for Christ, I felt alone. I felt I wasn't good enough for my kids. I constantly felt like I was drowning and full of self-doubt. I met Jesus during Chasing God. I had an urge to go up and pray for my children's father. Jesus spoke to me for the first time through the person who was praying for my children's father. I had tears of relief knowing God sees our situation and he will provide for our family. He told me what he knew I needed to hear. He said that he is pleased with what I'm doing and that I'm not standing alone in the water when I feel like I'm drowning. I am good enough for my kids. He took all my doubt away. I feel so relieved and at peace knowing I have Jesus with me. I am no longer constantly worrying if I'm a good mom because I have Jesus by my side. I love Jesus and I know I'm not alone with him by my side. So I'm gonna invite the four of you to come over on this side of the auditorium and get ready to be baptized. Here's what's gonna happen as they uh, approach the baptismal, there'll be a pastor, another staff member in the tank with them. They'll ask them three questions. Uh, the first question is, do you believe Jesus Christ is the savior of the world? They've been asked this question before and so we're certain that they're gonna say yes. And then we'll ask them, is Jesus Christ your personal uh, savior? And they'll answer yes and then uh, we'll finish by asking them, to the best of your ability, the rest of your life, will you follow Jesus? I'll say yes. We'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, you all get to watch, celebrate, participate uh, while you sit. Uh, and then uh, we'll move back into a time of worship. So we're going to pray for these four before they get baptized. So let's pray. So Father, we thank you for the lives that have been changed. I love the testimonies uh, and the symbol earlier. It just caught me. Kara mentioned that she felt like she was drowning. And God said, you're not alone. And so God, we pray this morning as these four get baptized, they recognize that during baptism, they, they are not alone, will never be alone. So we thank you for these lives that are changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
So here's what we're going to do. The four of you who got baptized, I know you're all wet, but here's what I'm, I'm going to invite us to do. We, we would love to pray for you. So I'm going to, do we have like four rows? We're going to send one person down each row. So pick a row that you'd like, go halfway down. Abby will help direct some traffic and land in you. And then what you all will do, uh, if you feel comfortable, if you're a follower of Jesus, is sort of huddle around these four. And we're just going to pray for them uh, as a big step that they took today. So ready, go. Get around them, lay a hand on them. Let's pray for these folks. All right, so Father, we thank you for what you have done in these lives. You are a rescuer, God. And so we pray that from today forward, God, that you would be close to them, that the Holy Spirit would fill them that when they would read their Bibles, they would, something supernatural would happen and scripture would come alive for them. That it would sink into their heart and grow. And I bind the enemy from disrupting these steps into something even greater. God, we're just praying that today that friends would come around these four that people would speak life that's connected to what you're saying in their lives. And God, once again, we just thank you for these, these four lives that are changed forever. And we're all this morning celebrating with you in heaven, Jesus. And we say thank you in Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna invite you to have a seat. We're gonna move into a time of baptisms and hearing testimonies, or we call them around the vineyard God stories. When people uh, share that they want to be baptized, we ask them just to share a small snippet of their life before Jesus and what it means to them now to accept Jesus. So we're going to have six baptisms. I'm going to invite John. John's going to come over first. Everybody say hi, John. Hi. My name is John Henry Frazier. And I've been a Christ follower for 20 years and was previously baptized as a 15-year-old. Even as a follower, I never felt a strong direction in life from God as what to do as a Christian or as a man, leading me to take advantage of those around me that offered me anything. I was the classic, given an inch, take a mile, which had... which led to so many strained relationships, most notably with my brother who lost all respect for me, and I ended up ultimately being alone. And I was alone until 16 months ago. I was in an accident, and I was so close to dying for two weeks. And in recovery, the doctors were telling me that I would probably wouldn't walk again or go back to work. And I met so many people that were ready for me to give up, but I heard this small voice in the back of my head saying, remember how you got your name? And uh, that is a story about my dad. He was shaving one day and he heard a voice behind him saying, you're gonna have another son and you're gonna name him John Henry and he's gonna be, gonna be a mighty man of God. Mm. And he finished shaving his neck and he was like, what did I eat last night? And then my mom burst into the bathroom and started having morning sickness with me. So, uh, where am I? So I would 
thinking of that, I would smile at the doctors and say, we'll see. <laughs> and I relied on that small voice to get me through it. Now, now I can walk and run, and I'm working with newfound determination, but I've been hearing that small voice again asking me to get baptized. And I've kind of shrugged it off because when I was baptized the first time, it was just because I knew it was a thing that Christians did, not because I was called to it. But now I heard, have an unmistakable call from God. He's saying, I gave you new life. Now live it for me. Yes. So I'm here to dedicate the rest of my new life in declaration to the world that I'm living because of Jesus. Yes. Okay, Rebecca, come on over. Everybody say, hi, Rebecca. When I was six years old, I gave myself to Christ, and I was raised in a Christian home. But when I was barely 11, I started feeling really stressed to the point of throwing up. I couldn't focus in school, and I was feeling sorry for things that I shouldn't. I had a nervous breakdown, and I had to go home, to the ho and I had to go to the hospital. I got up out about a month later. I was out in and out of the hospital between months. And then I got on the right medicine. I'm, I'm in my right mind now. God has been with me even through the mistreatment. I'm strong with God and I don't, and I don't feel stressed. And I sleep very well now. Jesus has kept me out of the hospital for over five years now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tanya, come on over. Everybody say hi, Tanya. Tanya, and I'm nervous, nervous, nervous. Um, my son's up here with me because sometimes I get unsteady, and uh, I just discovered that one of those times is when I'm nervous. Okay. I lived in a Christian home, and I was molested and raped as a child, um, 10 years and under. I wanted to make sure that I say that living in a non-Christian home um, yeah, because I was living in a non-Christian home uh, does not mean that you're going to be molested or raped. Mm -hmm. That was just my experience. I had anxiety all of my life. After I graduated from high school, I drove to Colorado and lived there for about 10 months. There, I abused my body sexually. Let's see, yeah, after being there about six to eight months, I got pregnant. Imagine that. I called my mom. I wouldn't tell her what it was. She figured it out herself. And she said to come home, which is here in Indiana. And I did. It was a difficult choice for me. I, f I also continued to feel God tap on my shoulder. 
hearing his voice in my ear, whispering, you are my child. Then I met my husband, Phil. at church, and six months later, we were married. When I tell people that, they can't believe it, that we've been married for 32 years. Shortly after that, I became a Christian, a serious one. I think Phil had a little bit to do about about that. You guys can all hear me, can't you? Yes. I became an alcoholic in Colorado. And now when I see alcohol, I crave it. It's very upsetting. So I decided that I'm going to look for an AA group. Um, I think that I need that support because it's a, a huge pull on my life. I read my Bible every day. And I tried to eat it, read it early in the morning so I'm not disrupted by everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus talks to me through the Bible. It's, it's just amazing how much Jesus talks to us when we read his word. I was praying to him after I read, his, read the Bible <clears throat> one day and praying that he would please heal my de um, depression. And he did. I am not depressed anymore. And I can't believe how much of a miracle that is. I'm so glad that Jesus is in my life because I would be lost without him. Amen. Thank you for listening. Isn't Jesus amazing? Jackson. Did I say that right? Jackson? Is that right? Did I pronounce it right? Yes. Okay, everybody say hi, Jackson. Hi. Hi, my name is Jackson, and I'm going to tell you, you all on what I know about my life before I met Jesus. Before I met Jesus, I was crazy, angry, and not patient. But I started to pray and go to church, and I got more calm, patient, and nicer every time I go. <laughs> it, was, it was short and simple. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lawton, come on over. Everybody say hi, Lawton. I am Lawton. I did don't remember. Don't remember my life before Jesus. My life before Jesus. I don't, don't remember how I met Jesus. But Jesus loves me. And he helps me. And he helps me 
to not fight with my sister, well, brother and sisters. He helps me with school. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, come on over. Everybody say hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Whoa. <laughs> Before I met Jesus, my life was filled with fear, doubt, and hopelessness. I'd experienced experienced years of bullying and mistreatment growing up in school, doubting who I was, and I let in a lot of negative thoughts and fears of people into my mind, to the point that even leaving my home at one point became a challenge. During my last year of high school, up to about three and a half months ago, I felt so hopeless in my future and depressed in my life that the only thing I was looking forward to was the day that I would die. Then three and a half months ago, a then distant friend invited me here for the first time. I had not even been in a church since I was 12 years old. I was given from Jesus a night of seeing who he really was and what he has done and could do for people like me. That very night, I was deciding whether it was worth living for, and when Jesus told me he was going to set me free from my old life, I accepted him as my savior. Ever since this, I have been given a new life with so much to look forward to, hope in my future, and happiness and thanks in every circumstance. He has given me a purpose to live for to bring others the good news of Jesus and what he can do. He blessed me with a smile that is genuine, a filter to see his works through, and an eternity in and with him to look forward to. Praise God. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, invite those getting baptized over the baptismal. And you all get to help watch, celebrate, and participate as they get into the tank. We'll ask them three questions. The first is, is Jesus Christ the Savior of the world? And we've asked them that before. They'll say yes. We'll ask them if Jesus is their personal Savior. And they'll say yes. And then we'll ask them, to the best of your ability, for the rest of your life, will you continue to follow Jesus? And then we'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So with that, let's pray for those getting baptized. So God, we thank you for these six lives that are changed. And we celebrate with you, God, in what you're doing. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.
going to do something a little different uh, in this service. I'm going to invite the, those that are getting baptized. I want you to line up right up here in the front. As I was listening to the testimonies, they were all beautiful. Uh, the last one sort of hooked my heart a bit. Uh, here's their reality. A life without God lacks a lot, including meaning. And God has called not only these people, but a lot of people in the room. And maybe he's calling you today to reconcile your relationship with Jesus. Without him, life is hard. And so I'm going to pray here in just a second. But just a reminder, Jesus Christ died on a cross to eliminate your, the sins of your past and set you free and set you on a direction where your life has purpose and meaning and there can be joy. If you ever see Michael, where's Michael? Michael's right here. If you ever see Michael in the atrium, usually he's smiling because he has Jesus in his life. And so the invitation this morning for those of you who may be far from God is to reconcile that relationship with Jesus. And so I'm gonna pray, and if that's you, I'm actually gonna invite you to come up here and stand with this group. It's kind of a bold step, but you should do it. And so while I'm praying, just move if this is you. So Father, I pray right now that those in the room, you know those in the room, God, who are far from God, who want to be reconciled back to a right relationship, that you would help them stand up and move. So Holy Spirit, come. This could be the best news and best day of your life. thank you. For some of you, your heart might be beating because you know this is you, but you just don't want to move and you should. And so I pray that the weight that you're feeling would be lifted and so you can stand up for Jesus to declare that he is the only answer that fixes the ails of life, that there's a hole in your heart and that hole can only be filled by Jesus. Church, we're going to pray for this group together. I just want to pray one more time. Lord, if there's someone in the room, do not let them leave. Oh, thank you. Do not let them leave. Thank you, sir, for being bold. That's a big deal. Anybody else? I'm going to close this. We're going to pray. This is your opportunity to move. There's another one. Okay, church, let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for this time, for these lives, for those who are being baptized and for those who are saying yes and yes again to Jesus. We thank you that you're a God who speaks. Many of them today said that they heard your voice, so we thank you for that. say we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Here at the Vineyard, when someone's getting baptized, we invite them to share their God story or testimony of what their life was like before Jesus and uh, what it's like now. So we're going to invite up Michelle. She's going to share. Everybody say hi, Michelle. Hi. You got this. I got this. Well overdue. Did I say my name? Yeah. Okay. I'm Michelle. All right, ready? So growing up, we attended church, really not understanding why. So I was taught of a God, but didn't have a relationship with Jesus. A lot of confusion, a lot of just going through the emotion. As a child, there was a lot of emotional, mental, physical, and sexual abuse. I went, so I have walked through life numb, always wanting attention, always wanting to be told I was doing good. But for some reason, I was always doing bad. Uh, hey, they say any attention is better than no attention. 
I then turned to drugs and alcohol, seeking attention from boys. I was never pushed to do any better than what I was doing. Now as an adult, still feeling like a lost, scared, curious child, I continued to seek approval, love, and acceptance. It wasn't until I found N.A. and a sponsor whose spirituality I wanted so badly uh, did I find Jesus. My faith in Jesus grew, keeps growing. I feel, um, oh, I feel so different about my life. I have gained respect for myself, love for myself. I feel love. I am able to... Give love through the love and acceptance of Jesus Christ. I no longer have to fight. I know unconditional love. I am forever grateful, and I will do my best to continue walking with the Lord. I am worthy. You can go that way, Rachel. Danny, come on up, Danny. Everybody say hi, Danny. Don't be nervous. They like you. Okay. I'm Danny, y'all. Hi. Um, my life before I came to church was very hectic. I was very suicidal and very sad and all the time. Angry with everyone. I shut myself off from everyone. I miss, I was always going to the community center, but never listened to people, what people had to say about Jesus. But I started meeting with Elise Massey this year for this, uh, discipleship about God and learning how to read your Bible. God has really pushed me to do better and has a mindset of holiness. I have accepted Jesus in my life of this year, 2023. I have now sense of, I have a now sense of understanding of Jesus and how giving your life to him can, <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, to, life to uh, him can uh, replenish your soul. Good job. <laughs> All right, Vincent, come on up. Hey, everybody, it's Vincent. Say hi, Vincent. People like you, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vince. My life before Jesus was rocky. I did porn. I have cursed at my uh, many people. I have bad attitude towards my parents. I had siblings. I had and my siblings. Now I met Jesus. It is how I met Jesus is from my mom's work friend that I that that went to this church and got us connected. And I committed my life to Jesus. My, uh, committed my, uh, my life, my life to Jesus at, I got, con uh, got us connected. I went to the middle school summer camp and I got committed my life to Jesus. My life, my life now is better by not cursing, not watching porn, having bad attitude towards my parents anymore. Good job. <laughs> Tyler, come on up. Everybody say hi, Tyler. Hi, I'm Tyler. My life used to be filled with depression and anger. I used to be a drug addict, not sure what to believe in. It went from wondering to searching. I then found Vineyard Church. The first time I walked through the doors, I felt a feeling I never felt. I was at peace. So I kept coming back every Sunday and finally gave my life to Jesus. Since then, I have found happiness. The depression has gone away. I'm not so angry, and I have seen my purpose in life. I'm not so scared now that I have Jesus walking beside me. Aren't these good? Wow, Austin, come on up. Hey, Austin. Everybody say hi, Austin. My name's Austin. <laughs> Before I met Christ, my life was consumed by darkness. Being an IV drug addict, an alcoholic, and a career criminal 
left me in a state of perpetual spiritual bankruptcy. I was born into and raised by a Christian family, but I strayed from the path and ended up rejecting the idea of God completely. I considered myself an atheist, blaspheming with every breath, and I sealed my mind shut. I was left to suffer from all the pain I was trying to hide, or so I thought. My first conscious encounter with Christ was in a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. God pursued me aggressively, but I was still unwilling as my battle with my drug addiction came to an alarming climax. I found myself in a hospital bed, terrified and alone, terrified at the very real threat of losing my life and limbs. That's when my father and my stepmother, Kip Hale and Regina Snyder, laid hands over me and asked me that my desire to use be removed from me in the name of Jesus. That was December 4th, 2021, and that is my clean date. <laughs> Today, my relationship with Christ, though it is still in its infancy, has given me a peace beyond understanding, and I'm ready to dedicate my life to building his kingdom. Give me just a second. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we're gonna move into a time of baptisms. Those folks are gonna come over. <clears throat> and as they're preparing to get into the tank, we're going to ask them three questions. They've heard these questions before, uh, but the questions are, is Jesus Christ the Savior of the world? And they're going to answer yes, because their testimony led them in that direction, right? Is Je Second question, is Jesus Christ their personal Savior? And then the last question is, for the rest of your life, to the best of your ability, will you continue to follow Jesus? And then we'll baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so that's what we're going to do up here. What you're going to do is you're going to celebrate and uh, join in with us while you are seated and watching on the screens. And then we'll move back into a short time of worship. But let's pray for them before they get baptized. So Father, we thank you for the lives changed, for the, for the testimonies that God, you've been calling them for some time. And so we celebrate this morning what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Bro. 
something uh, before we close out this worship set uh, that I think uh, can be meaningful for someone or some people in this room. I'm going to invite those who are baptized up front just to stand in a line. And what uh, all those testimonies were amazing. In each one of them, there was a thread. It seemed to me like it didn't matter what happened in the past. God was still pursuing these people into a relationship to set them on a path that was different than their past. And so the invitation this morning for some people in the room is to recognize that Jesus has been calling you and that your past and the shame that you have in your past, he died on a cross for that so you can be in right relationship with him and you can be on a different path with him. And so if that's you this morning, if you wanna commit your life to Jesus, or if you wanna recommit your life to Jesus, I'm gonna invite you after I pray or during this prayer to actually come up and stand with this group. We're not gonna force you to be baptized. We're just gonna pray for you. But this could be, like I believe that this morning you came for a reason because for some of you, God called you and placed you here this morning just for this moment. And so I'm gonna pray. And if this is you, I want you to just nudge your way out of your row and come forward. So Father, I pray this morning that for those that you have called this morning into a new right relationship that you would prompt them to move. For some of you, you don't want to move. Anybody not want to move, but you know you're supposed to? It feels maybe heavy. So I pray that that heaviness would lift. This is an invitation of the Lord that's prompting Thank you for coming up. There's a few more. Thank you. It's a big deal. Some of you, uh, some of you have felt far from God. Some of you have felt far from God and today is the day that you could reconnect. He's inviting you to that time to reconnect. So I'm going to give you just one more opportunity before we pray for this group. All right, I'm going to pray. Will you pray with us? So Father, thank you for these lives that have changed, that gave great testimony. And we also thank you, God, for prompting those who stepped forward. What a bold step to step forward to say yes to you. There's even more coming now. So God, we say thank you for calling. Thank you for being a God who loves people so much that the shame of their past can be separated from their future. And we say thank you for that. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you into these lives. Fill them up. Fill them up, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name.